everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori, if you're new here, and today we are doing a newborn must-have video. This one was highly requested on Instagram, and I'm so excited after almost three babies to show you what has worked for us. Of course, every situation is going to be unique. I will say when it comes to motherhood and uh, things, I have more of a minimalist approach now that I'm on my third child. Definitely not the same when I had my first but I've narrowed it down to what works for us and what we're most successful with so I am going to try and get through this video the kids are doing a puzzle if you hear them laughing about but I think this is a good list and it is budget friendly which is the most important thing to me each item is pretty easy to use meaning you don't really have to be intimidated by it or anything and I can link all the items for you I have Amazon but of course I always like to say if you can find it cheap uh, definitely do that. You don't always have to shop through my links. Of course, it's greatly appreciated, but not necessary. So I will do my best to find uh, the cheapest items here, but we are going to get right into this list. If you are new here, hi, hello. My name is Tori. I am a wife, mother of almost three and a new stay at home mom. I used to be a teacher. I resigned last year to be home on our little homestead we have here in northern Colorado with my kids and it's just been a year of learning and growing so I'm excited to learn and grow with you if you are in the same boat please drop a comment down below of course I always like getting to know all of you so if you're comfortable and you're new here definitely let me know in the comments below you can follow me on all the socials those are linked as well but we would love to have you here as part of my little motherhood family so if you like that kind of thing definitely hit the subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up and without further ado let's get into this list first things first let's talk about clothing now my babies are typically home with me for that first little newborn three months but I understand if you are dropping them off with another caregiver or a daycare or something like that but I feel like this is helpful for everyone and they can sleep in this. They can also be awake and comfy during the days in these, but this was from a good friend, Colleen on here. So thank you, Colleen. I love these zippered pajamas. Uh, I think they're great. These Burt's Bees do have a fold over so you can cover their little fingers. Um, sometimes uh, babies scratch themselves. My daughter did not so we actually didn't have to use the fold over but we did have them and they have feet which is important to me as well no matter what season you're having your baby in. So I have a few of these. We're having a girl this time so I have some floral prints here. This really beautiful, um, it just reminds me of autumn just yellow and brown but I do love the brand Kate Quinn and they have bamboo organic Burt's Bees is just cotton organic and it depends what kind of fabric you like with the bamboo it's definitely softer uh, they also have other materials on that website and it's a lot of organic materials for a cheap price so definitely check them out i'm not affiliated with them but they have a great product and i think it works well because bamboo grows with your child so some of those sleepers can last you well past the newborn stage i get mine in newborn with my son we had to pick up a few preemie items uh but my babies, you know, every baby's going to grow differently. So it depends how your baby's growing, how your baby's born. But I would definitely get maybe a newborn size and a zero to three just in case, just so you can start out. But that's my number one. I, I will say I fell for it with my son. I got all the cute little outfits and the socks. Um, and I will say they make cute pictures, but for us, it was kind of a waste of money because it's not something that we were dressing him in all the time. And even if we did, there would usually be some sort of mess that we were cleaning up. So they would wear that outfit for maybe an hour and then we would switch on to the next outfit. That's why I think for ease of getting these on, they work awesome and for my partner my husband it was really easy for him to understand those and help out which is important so if you have help and you're wanting something easy clothing wise definitely get yourselves a few of those zip up pjs i do have button-ups i just 
prefer the zip ups because newborns are super wiggly. Next up for sleeping, I swaddled my son and then I learned about these awesome little things. Swaddling, you know, is a hot topic. If you are into it, these will work for you. This brand, I, oh, the Halo brand, that's what it is. And they're back to the basic swaddles. So I'm going to undo this for you here. It's very secure, but what you do is put the baby in here. You can put your jammies on and then put the baby in here and zipper it. And if you, both of my babies, you know, their uh, moral reflex, which is this reflex, uh, you know, that they were, they were a little tricky with that, we shall say. So they would always sneak a little arm out or they would sneak both arms out. But, you know, I did try and swaddle them to sleep. So you put both arms down and then, wish I had a baby to demonstrate this on. And then you wrap them in this swaddle. I would not say I did it tightly, but this is how we soothed and tried to go to bed. We are not sleep trainers, but we try and create routines around sleep time and that kind of helps. So this one's a great one, the swaddle. I've tried this before. I think they are so funny. This is the love to dream swaddle. And this one, they can put their hands up, but they are contained. Uh, my babies didn't roll like right off the bat. I've seen newborn babies roll before and I understand how that could be a fear because then you really have to start looking if they roll to their stomach and they don't have access to their arms. So yes, uh, it depends on your baby, but you're probably gonna hear me say that a lot. I think these are great. They're a little pricey for what you get, but they look like a little starfish in here when they're sleeping and it's super cute. So that's another option. And then the third option I have here is the, I think it's called nested bean. Yes, nested bean. And it's a similar setup to the halo swaddle, but in the chest area, you have this heavy piece and I wouldn't say it's too heavy. It's essentially weighted and I, use these when uh, they move up from newborn. So I don't typically use these in the newborn stage, but I did want to include it because you you just might want to grab a few, you know, some of them come in three packs. So this is weighted and uh, I think it's helpful, but you have to check with your pediatrician on what you're comfortable with. I, I'm not comfortable doing a weighted on my infants, but when it comes to three to six months, I think this is really helpful and it's supposed to mimic your hand on their chest. So that is what I think it's for, um, just to have a little bit of safety and security for your baby. So yes, I love the nested bean. I think it's really helpful. And um, my Delilah, she did not like it, but my son did. So again, it depends on each baby. All right, next on the list, since we're speaking of sleep, a good old sound machine. And I will say this is one of those items that we already had at the house before we had children. And then uh, we added, you know, our children, we wanted them to get used to this. My husband is in law enforcement, so his sleep schedule is everywhere. Um, and sometimes he sleeps during the day. So it's helpful to have this sound machine. So this is something that my baby adapted to, but I have seen that a lot of people use sound machines as a way to cue sleep. So there's so many different settings on here. There's so many different you know, sizes, colors, uh, songs on here, but you just hit the top of it and it turns a light on if you need a little night light. And I think it works great. So I always have these in the kids room and we have one in our room as well. And again, we use the wave sound on ours. Uh, and then when they become toddlers, this one in particular has the green and red lights. So if it's a red light, they shouldn't be leaving the room or if it's a green light, they can feel free to move about your home. So this one grows uh, if it lasts that long. Sometimes we haven't had the best luck when it comes to, you know, electronics, but I love this one. It's inexpensive and you can get them in a two pack now. So I will link this in my Amazon store. That's the cheapest I have found it. A sound machine is wonderful. They have nursery rhymes. They have just nature sounds, different things. So my son really loved the frog sounds, just uh, the nighttime frog sounds. And my daughter loved the waves. So right now we are using the waves, but sometimes we'll switch it up. Next up on the list, we are actually doing this now, but I, as a 
teacher, ex-teacher, really encourage reading to your children. I read to the baby while she's in me right now and I, you know, plan to read to her in the hospital when she's born and, you know, until until she can start reading on her own. But I, I have so many different books, but reading is important to our family and I think it should be important to everyone. So this is something I feel strongly about. So there are different books that you can have for newborns. Of course, they might not have the attention span that you want them to, but it's worth a shot, right? So I love the touch and feel books because you can take their hand and have them touch here. Um, some make sound. You could do that if you want. A lot of people use black and white for newborns, but I still introduce the colors from time to time. But, you know, you can just mimic the sounds and things like that. So the baby's touch and feel books are great. I love Peter Reynolds books. So Happy Little Dreamer is a good one. And then I have Mama Loves You So. So you can find these books just about anywhere. They make newborn ones where they can like chew on them and not really damage it. But these books have lived through two newborns so far. And I think it's really important to keep on your list. They are also very inexpensive. You can go to your local library and uh, find their sales as well. My library gives these children's books away for 25 cents. They clean them, but then I come home and sanitize as well. This is an option. There are so many different books out there. So I suggest if you have some sort of registry, perhaps putting a few books on there. Um, with mine, a lot of my family members wrote a little note in the book for my kids too, which is another idea. And um, it's something that my grandmother did for me. So I love reading back on all of those books that she got for me and her little notes and uh, how old I was and things like that. So books are a great one. Next up on the list is just these little containers here. Uh, I mean, you can get these from Target. It could be a basket, but I put these on every floor of the home. Sometimes I put them one in my bathroom, but they're just little setups. So I am going to do a postpartum must have videos as well, but this one would be specifically for your newborn. So you could put, you know, some wipes in there, some diapers, you could put some books in there like we were talking about, uh, maybe some ointment that they need for like a diaper rush cream or something like that. I make mine homemade, so I always have a little jar in there, but it's helpful so you're not running around trying to look for things, you know, and bringing the baby up and down stairs. It depends. Uh, you know your living situation but uh, we live on the top floor and that's where the baby will stay with us but sometimes we might need something from the bottom floor so this basket gets replicated three or four times and we put them throughout the house i allow my husband or whoever's visiting the baby to know what's in there that way they can easily grab and go and i can also grab and go so i suggest getting these baskets very inexpensive this one was eight dollars or something from target target's always having a sale on these and then when it comes to wipes and diapers if we're not cloth diapering which we typically are not in the newborn stages just because uh I just haven't found my rhythm with newborn uh, cloth diapers. It's just not something that I enjoy. So around three months is when we switch to cloth and I don't mind doing that, especially now that I'm home, I'll have some time to be able to keep up with the cloth diaper situation. And if you're curious about daycares, just ask them if they're comfortable with that. Most daycares allow it. You just have to take care of the soiled diapers and things like that. So I, uh, I like the Hello Bello brand, but we really love Millie Moon. There's the Honest brand out there as well. Um, of course, you have to figure out which diapers work for you. Some of the other diapers, like the store brands, are like the Target store brand and the Kroger store brand. Sometimes just haven't felt the best for us uh, but again it depends on every baby so i suggest checking out millie moon it's reasonably priced and uh they have i, I feel like they have a good company but hello bello is another one so i wanted to include wipes and diapers in here i don't have any millie moon newborns with me right now but that's something I wasn't prepared for looking at the little diapers and seeing how truly tiny they are. It's just a fun part about being a parent. And then next up is a pacifier, another one that's controversial, but I've used it for all of my children. It did not interfere with breastfeeding or feeding in general, uh, but you have to see what works for you. We like the Wubba Nubs and we always get a different character for every child. So this was my daughter. She had a little horse. Uh, they have unicorns and things like that. This 
uh, little attachment is a Phillips Avent uh, pacifier and it's a zero to three. So I, I, they're going to move up with them if your children take pacifiers. Mine didn't last past a year. So, uh, you know, I never had an issue with taking away the pacifier. And the thing about the Wub and Up is they stay there, which is uh, tricky with newborns. Sometimes they pop it out of their mouth. It's something that you might have to hold for them to get them to understand. But uh, it's really helped my children with soothing. I I am there to help them soothe, but it's also important to us to have them be able to self-soothe as well. So we don't do the cry it out method. I know that works for some families, but uh, when it comes to being, you know, content and not attached to me all the time, I feel like these are really helpful, although I can't get enough of the newborn stage. So my babies are typically attached to me and I'm not complaining. And then moving on from there are some wooden toys. This is silicone with some wood, and these are just things that they can start learning to hold in their hand. It's not something they'll grip immediately and be able to lift up and down, but I love these little wooden toys. I find them on Amazon. They're baby specific, so you have to look into that. You can't just go outside and get a piece of wood and have them chew on it. You know, you just need to find your brands, but they have little deers like this, and it's just something that they can play around with. With um, this one, I typically don't introduce until month two, just because, you know, they are still learning how to use their limbs, so sometimes they flail and hit themselves in the head, so this is something that they enjoy, and it's something that you could hold together, so it's just something tactile to work on you know, feeling different materials. Next on the list are wraps. And I have so many different wraps for different stages. I know some don't work for everybody, but I love, I, I'm i forgetting these brands because it's been a little bit. Okay, I found it. It's the Moby, the Moby wrap. But I love this for newborn stage because you can keep them really close to you. I will admit it takes some time and practice to be able to figure out how to tie it the way that you want it to and get them in there and positioned. I didn't just like learn immediately how to do this it took a while and it was a little tricky you know uh, with my son I wasn't sure if I was doing it right but as long as they're close to you and they are close enough to kiss is what they say is the best uh you know, way to do this. I have different baby carriers for different stages. Um, I also used to make ring slings, so I have a few of those as well, and that's where they're sitting on the hip. So it depends. I think these are inexpensive. They have cute patterns, and you can find them at Target as well if you're not an online shopper, so that's an option as well. We are getting near the end of the list here, but next on my list is going to be some sort of way to bathe your baby, and we don't do do a bath in the hospital. We we wait a little bit of time before we bathe our baby. They have uh, great stuff on the skin, but I know that's personal preference. But I love this little, uh, what is it called? The blooming bath. Yes, the blooming bath. And you can find this at Target or online, but it sits right in your sink. And I will be the first to admit um, having a newborn bath the first time was very nerve wracking for me. I um, suffered from some postpartum anxiety uh, and I have anxiety in general. So it was a little tricky putting them in a, a bathtub. We had different setups, but this one works the best for us. Uh, so you just place it in the sink here. And with my daughter, what we did was place her in there. They obviously aren't gonna be able to uh, hold themselves up, but we placed her in there and then we put a warm towel or a warm washcloth on top of her and that really soothed her. She was great in the bath where my son had some issue. Now he loves water, but, uh, and I think that was because he was a little chilly. So make sure you have some warm water in there. And I suggest placing them in your sink, just like that. Obviously cleaning out your sink before you do that. This does not fit in our bathroom sink, but some people have big bathroom sinks, so it might work there. And uh, you could also put it in the corner of your bathtub, but you might need a second set of hands. So I found that this was the best to bathe my babies um, by myself. So I really love this, inexpensive, and they have cute little patterns too. Next on the list, we're going back to sleep, and that is this big guy. This is a Monte bassinet. 
okay and i fell for it i had a crib you know i was had my crib all set up i thought you just placed a baby in a crib and that's how they slept and sometimes that works for people but the baby is uh you know going to be up at night they're going to be wanting to be fed um i was fortunate enough to have a good breastfeeding journey uh although you know there was a lot of trial and error there so um no matter how you're feeding your baby, they're going to want to eat at night. So I have the bassinets close to us, if not right on our bed. So I can put this in the middle of my husband and I, and um, this comes out, you can wash it, you can get different bassinet sheets. This guy came with a rocker. And funny story, it was on our registry and then I found it on Facebook for free, so I gave it a good wash. So uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. My kids are, having some, you know, arguments down there about the puzzle, but this is what I ended up having the baby sleep in. We co-sleep, and again, that doesn't work for everybody, but it worked for us, and I was able to feed my baby. Um, and then on the subject of placing a baby into something, I suggest finding a Moses basket. There are some on the market that are inexpensive or somewhere that you can place your baby on different floors because it's not fun lugging this from place to place. You don't I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable placing mine on the couch in case they were to roll, but I, you know, I'm doing things around the home as well as enjoying those newborn cuddles. And there are some times where you need to be able to place your baby down. So yes, I think it's important to have different vessels to place your baby. And I think there are so many out there and whatever works for you. My husband was raised on a laundry basket and a blanket and a pillow and that was it it was so simple for them just to place him in there so whatever works for you these are my list of course i'm forgetting something and i will fill you in in the future but i think this is a good starting point it's budget friendly and if you are new to motherhood please reach out to me i am no expert but i can talk to you i can answer what questions i have i'm not a doctor i'm just a mother with two kids that really enjoyed my experience and the ups and downs that come with it. So if you are interested in that, again, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. I hope this list was helpful. Please drop any questions you may have in the comments below, and I'm going to catch you on the next one. Bye, y'all.